Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel 3 Dias. So this is the part 4 of our video tutorial series related to paper cutter knife 3D modeling inside Autodesk Fusion 360. So if you had not watched the other 3 parts of this video tutorial series then I will strongly recommend you to go and check it out. You will find the link in the video description below. Just go and check out the first 3 parts first then come to this part on this part 4 of this video tutorial series. So uh, we will start modeling this here you can see right now on our screen we can start modeling this blade uh, inside Fusion 360 today. So it's very simple model. It is just going to take few minutes and we'll able to complete this model. So, so let's dive into Fusion 360 and start modeling. Okay, so now we are into Fusion 360. So here you can see we in our last three videos we had completed two components that is the base component and the back cap, cap component and in today's video we are going to start with the blade modeling uh, that I had showed you so before getting started I will make sure that here the top component is active because whatever the new component we are going to make that will be the child of this parent component so we'll start from here we'll go on to create option here and we'll click on the new component and I will give it a name blade so here you can see and I will press ok so now the blade component has been created created and it is also the active component now so our next task is to start with the sketch so I will turn off these two components older components and I will go into the top view we'll activate the create a sketch from here and we'll select the top plane as a sketch plane so here you can see the sketch plane is active also our tools are also active so we'll start with the center rectangle first we'll go on to here then we'll select the center rectangle from here then I will draw a center rectangle like this and I will dimension this set center rectangle I want to make it 18 millimeters then I want uh, I, I'm not sure about actually the width of this center rectangle but what I can do uh, I will just make a random width because we are not sure we'll uh, we'll use only those portions that are sufficient for us so now what I will do I will create one more line from this point to this point like this so it is on a particular angle and I will create one other line like this so here you can see and what I will do, I will dimension this second line from this point to this point from the edge of the rectangle is 30 millimeters. So here you can see. And I will also specify the angle of this line from the horizontal line that I want to keep 60 millimeter, 60 degree. So here you can see that I had created this line. And the width is still not defined, so no problem. What I can do, uh, I can use the what I can do, I can offset this line on both the directions by 0.1 millimeter. So before that, I want to, I have to make sure that these two lines are parallel. So we'll apply, uh, we'll activate the parallel constraint from here and we'll apply on the lines. Here you can see both the lines are parallel now. Now what I will do, I will use my offset tool. I will select the line and I will make sure that I am offsetting it by a 0.1, 0.1 millimeter. So this way what will happen if I offset this line then it will not be uh, touching to both the edges here you can see because it we are just offsetting it uh, in the right direction. So other ways to other way to do is I will create two lines. I will just create random lines. I will not make sure that those are parallel and then I will apply the parallel uh, constraint from here with the center line. Here you can see it's pretty easy. So we had created those lines. Now what I can do, I can define the distances by 0.1 millimeter, 0.1 millimeter like this. And on the other side also we'll define this distance from the center line, 0.1 millimeter. So here you can see I had defined those lines. And the next thing is that we'll have to construct this center line to a construction line. So I will just select the line and from here we we can able to convert that to construction line and the reason that we are converted that to construction line so this will act as a uh, one single profile and now what I am going to do is I will select all the three lines here you can see by pressing shift on my keyboard I am able to select the multiple sketches so I had selected all the three lines now I will go on to create option here and will activate our rectangular pattern tool and in rectangular pattern tool here are the three objects that we had selected then the direction for the direction I will select this bottom line and then in in the extent here we have to make sure that we are we had selected the spacing option here and so because every time uh, we are doing a rectangular pattern spacing is very useful and now we, we have to provide the quantity so I want to make sure that uh, we are making 10 number of quantities so here it is we had provided 10 number of quantities so instead of 10 what I can do I can also do 
seven number of quantities instead of ten so that will also be enough and uh, in this direction I just want one quantity and I will make sure that our things are visible so for that what I can do I can adjust the distance so this distance I want 10 millimeters and here you can see we are done so I will just press ok so this is what we are getting so now since we know the uh, complete length of our uh, rectangle so up to this point there will be a blade from this point to this point so uh, this is the extra length so now we can define our rectangle size so this time I'm just I will just make it 100 or maybe 105 here you can see so this way we had defined uh, everything and the next thing is that we also have to create one more hole here so for that I will create one more circle here so I will just uh, create a circle like this then I will make sure that this center point of circle and the center of our rectangle must be collinear so we'll apply this horizontal vertical constraint and then I will define the diameter of our circle so this will be the diameter of circle and this will be 5 and then I will define the distance of this circle from from the edge so from this edge to this edge I want to keep it as 8 millimeters so I will press 8 here so here you can see this or maybe we can we have to reduce it uh, maybe 6 6 millimeters so here you can see this is this is what we had defined so now I think we are done with it so now what I can do I can just click on the finish sketch here and our sketch is completed and the next thing is that now we have to convert that to 3d to look like a blade so we'll start doing that so now we'll activate our extrude tool from here and we'll start selecting the profiles so we have to make sure that we are selecting everything so we'll go on to zoom in on the areas uh, that are very small and we'll select those areas also so we don't have to miss anything because uh, this is a one single profile as a one single profile we want to convert this to a as a blade so I had selected everything here you can see and the next thing is that we have to make it symmetric so we want to make it uh, extruded in both the directions and the distance we want uh, 0.25 so here you can see we had provided 0.25 distance so this blade thickness will be uh, 0 0.50 in to come total from 0.25 this direction and 0.25 towards bottom side so this is will be 20 total 0.5 millimeters so and half of millimeters you can say and we'll press ok so here you can see uh, this is the blade shape that we had created and the next thing is that we have to uh, create a sharp is on this corner so uh, it will it will look like a blade so for that what we can do we can activate our sketch tool again from here then I will select this plane as a sketch plane and uh, what I have to do is I will just project a few of the sketches from this blade so I will activate my project tool I will select the profiles that I want to project here you can see these th three profiles we need and we'll press ok so the profiles has been projected if I turn off the body you will be able to see here you can see and what I can do now is I will create a, a line like this and I had created something wrong so I will just double click to select the complete loop and will press delete on my keyboard I will again create a line from this point to this point like this then I will de define the dimension I want this to be one millimeter so here you can see I had created a one millimeter of uh, this kind of shape then I can just click on finish a sketch and I will drag it like this uh, orbit it like this to see a better view I will turn on my body so before turning on my body I will activate my extrude tool I will select the profile and I will turn on my body and this time I will uh, make it symmetric also and will uh, make it a cut like this so I, I, just, I just have to make sure that uh, it is a through cut and will press ok so here you can see now it is looking like a blade here you can see the blade something looks like with its sharp edge here yeah, so this is the sharp edge that we had created uh, for the blade and the last thing that we have to make sure that there are groups on the top that will able to help in breaking the pieces of this blade so for that what we have to do we have to turn on our sketch one from here inside uh, that we had created and we'll turn off the body for now then we'll activate our extrude tool again then I will select all the profiles for which we want to make a cut on the top portion of our blade so here you can see I am easily selecting all the profiles so these are all the profiles that we want to select so up to this profile we want to select and then I will turn on my body to see uh, in a better view I will go on to the front view so we are able to see in a better view and this time uh, what's the trick here is instead of uh, starting from that plane I want to make it a little bit offset so I will offset a little bit and uh, offset distance I will drag and see uh, 
I will just give a offset distance here. I want it to make a point 0.2, maybe point 0.2, and then I want to make point 0.1 of a cut. So it will. I will see how it looks. So here you can see this is how it is looking for now. So I think we have to make a little bit more cut. So I will decrease the offset distance by 0.15, and here you can see it is looking great now. I will just press OK, and I will turn off the sketch, and here you can see. This is the blade that we had created with uh, lots of pieces. So there are total one, two, three, four, five, six pieces that you can break in between if you if the edges are not sharp enough uh, for your use. So the other portion of the blade will be ready for use in your projects. So this is how you can see we had completed this blade uh, component inside Fusion 360. And if you have any questions or any confusion regarding the process, you can just comment below in the video. I am always here to and happy to help you because I I had already already provided my Discord server uh, link in my video description, so you can also join that and ask me any of the questions related to any of my videos or any of the concerns uh, about your fusion 360 i i will always be happy to help you so guys uh, see you in my next tutorial so if you are just new to my channel today just uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, don't worry about the position of this blade right now because once we are done with all the components we'll start assembling the components uh, in our next videos or in the coming videos so keep watching guys keep learning